Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with JCR Off-Road. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to install our Crusader sliders here on our JL Wrangler. So we'll start things off with a little bit of assembly to the slider itself. I'll begin by bolting the lower skid section here to the bottom of the slider boat. For that, you just have to get them oriented properly. You'll have to kind of make sure you've got your left and right by making sure mostly these holes here in the back flange line up and that the cutouts line up with the holes along the back edge of the slider as well. Once you've got that determined, go ahead and just drop the slider down into the skid. Once you get that in, it's just gonna be a matter of lining up the eight holes, four along this front flange, four more along the back, and then installing eight of the 5 16 black button head bolts along with serrated flange nuts on the inside. It's gonna be a good idea to just leave these all loose until you get them all lined up and in place and then come back through with a 3 16 hex and tighten those up. Next, you can find the clip nuts in your bolt pack. You're gonna have two different sizes of these, both 5 16 and a smaller M6. The 5 16 are gonna go in the two lower holes at each step location down here to secure the step in place along with the M6 going in the three holes here along the back at this front step location and two at the rear step. So if you've never used these before, you just wanna make sure that the longer threaded portion winds up down at each hole location and they'll simply slide on and kind of snap into place. And then for the M6, that threaded portion just winds up back or in, and again, those should simply slide over and snap into the hole. Next, we'll get our rock lights installed into each end of the slider boat. For that, you'll take the light, slide it in behind this face, then you'll wanna find the number eight button heads along with nylock nuts and get each of those started loosely by hand. Then you'll need a 3 30 seconds hex and an 11 30 seconds wrench or socket to hold the nut side. And you can go ahead and evenly tighten these up, just kind of making sure that the light itself sits flat to the inside of that face. Once you have that evenly tightened and the light kind of centered on the hole, you can go repeat that process on the other end. Now with this assembled, we can set it off to the side temporarily and begin getting our brackets installed to the vehicle. So for each side of the vehicle, you're gonna have six mounting brackets, three identical outer brackets, and three inners all labeled with a one, two, and three here along that back side. Those are gonna install in that order from front to rear. So we'll start off with bracket number one along with this outer bracket. So we're starting out with, again, bracket number one. This is the inner bracket. And then you're gonna need to find the M8 flanged hex head bolt here in your bolt pack. That'll go into this back slot and then thread into a pre-existing threaded hole up here in the vehicle body. And then this should simply line up with the two existing factory holes here out in this pinch seam. We're gonna kind of just thread this most of the way in by hand, leaving ourselves just a little bit of room for adjustment as we get the remaining brackets installed. Next, we can install the outer bracket here to the outside of this lower pinch seam. For that, you'll want 5 16 hex head bolts from your bolt pack along with washers. You'll install those inside out here, and then install a serrated flange nut here on the outside. Same thing here at the rear, 5 16 bolt, washer, and serrated nut. So we'll leave this just a little bit loose here so that you have adjustability and compliance as we get the slider boat installed. And then you can use these same steps to install brackets two and three. So then once you have all three sets of these brackets installed here on the pinch weld, we can now grab our slider boat and get it back in here. And this will give us something to kind of hang it on and position it while we get our 5 16 button head started through the top flange and into these pre-installed nuts. Then down on the bottom side, through all of these holes here, 
you'll use that same 5 16 hex head with a washer and flange nut like we used up here. Now I'm going to be using our transmission jack here to support the slider while we're getting it up into place. If you're doing this on the ground in a garage or a driveway, you could easily do a very similar thing with just a floor jack. So we're just going to lift this up and get it slid on to these top mounts. And then line up the holes and install those button head bolts through the top here. Once you have all of the upper button head hardware in place, you can move down to installing your 5 16 hex bolts down here. Now in bracket location two and three, it's gonna look just like this and you'll have easy access to install the bolt and the nut like so. However, bracket location one up at the front, this is all kind of boxed in just like the back edge here and you won't be able to get to that very easily. So you'll have to take the nut and reach over this back flange line it up with the slot, and then install the nut, the bolt. So then once you have all your button head hardware in place along the top, kind of holding the slider in place, you can move down to installing the 5 16 hex bolts down here. Now, in bracket location two and three, you're gonna have easy access through the step location like you see right now, and you'll be able to get in here and push the bolt through and install the nut pretty easily. However, bracket location one, it's gonna be already kind of boxed in like I have back here. And you're gonna to need to take the nut, kind of fish it over this back flange and then push it over and line it up with the hole before reaching in there and installing the bolt as well. And this is just gonna be that same 5 16 hex bolt with a washer and serrated flange nut in these locations. Now at this point, you'll grab your step inserts and your Accent logo tread plates. You'll take the step insert, kind of start with one end in, then drop this down and slide it back the other way to line up your mounting holes. When you drop the tread plates in, just pay attention to the logo to make sure that reads properly. And then you can line it up and install two more of those black 5 16 button heads through both the step, the tread plate, and into those clip nuts we installed earlier. Then with a four millimeter hex, you can install the black M6 button heads here through the back flange and into those clip nuts. So once you have all the mounting hardware for the step and tread plate in place, you can tighten that up and install the rear step using that same process. Then with both steps in and tight, we can move on to tightening up all the main mounting hardware. So we'll start up top here with the 5 16 button heads through this top flange. For those, you are gonna need just a conventional 90 degree Allen wrench due to clearance between the top of the slider here and the body. And you can just work your way down and tighten up all six of those. So then moving underneath, you can see we're working at mount location two. However, they will all tighten in this same configuration. So you'll start with a 13 millimeter socket on the flanged metric bolt here. And then you can switch to a half inch socket to tighten all the 5 16 hardware between the pinch weld here and the slider. So if you find that any of these are not tightening up, you may just need to reach in behind here and temporarily hold the nut until it makes contact with the back side of the slider and the serrated flanges kind of bite in to hold that. And now with everything tight, the last thing to do is gonna to be to wire in your rock lights, which is kind of up to you because there's obviously a lot of ways those could be tied in. You can wire them to an individual switch to use as a conventional rock light or get them wired into the dome light circuit as more of a courtesy light as you enter and exit the vehicle. So with that, this installation is complete. Now, if you guys have any questions at all about this product or anything else we offer here at JCR Off-Road, don't hesitate to reach out to us. 
You can always email us at info at jcroffroad.com or give us a call at 269-353-1184.